In this video, we're going to learn how to draw a realistic looking white dog with long hair in pastel pencils. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are here for the first time, my name is Julieta and I'm a portrait artist. And those of you that are back, welcome back. And in this video, which is roughly about 11 or 12 minutes long, I am going to teach you a fragment of how I get to this result, drawing a cute little dog that has like kind of long hair and is white. And it's kind of like um, Maltese, I believe it is. I mean, I don't know, it's probably, you know, a couple more combinations. But the thing is, in this section, I'm going to teach you basically everything that I repeated throughout the whole portrait. So follow these steps and I hope you enjoy it and I will see you later. So we will continue with this drawing that I, I really, really like how it's turning out. And this is probably going to be the last slide we're going to do on this one. And today we're just going to keep, we're going to continue doing what we've been doing so far. I might touch a little bit of the eye, but you know, I kind of did already most of what I had to do to make it look realistic and lifelike. So let's begin. This area of the face of this beautiful pooch is, it has a lot of like different shades of gray as well as um, white. And like I said in our previous lives, the, the thing you want to do first is do the underlying colors and the ones on top which are which are usually going to be the lightest you want to do them last so that's why right now you see me applying grays instead of whites hola wilson bienvenida and tío lopio thank you for joining us bienvenido <laughs> i don't know if you speak english or spanish so i'm saying it both so I'm doing like different, um, as you can see, I'm doing different shapes, different directions of the strokes of the, of the pencil because I'm just following the reference picture. And this is the way, you know, the direction the hairs are going to be, which is always very interesting. And you can kind of see by what I'm doing, how this is going to start looking. Hola, mami. <laughs> Bienvenida. Okay, so we're doing this. I think it's like gray, but it has a little bit of a tint of brown. So that's another thing that I think it's important to, to say you know, or to keep in mind, take into account all the time. If you're working in pastels like I'm doing right now or a good quality color pencil, don't, you know, don't get too overwhelmed or trying to find the right shade. You simply mix. So now what we're going to do, Arnav, thank you for joining, great to see you. Um, and um, so what we're going to do, we're going to mix our gray with a little bit of brown. And we want to get this very, very unique color that usually dogs like this have. You know, they can be like, you know, poodles, Maltese, I don't, I don't know what breed this one is specifically, but it must be something like that. So this will give us the this will allow us to create that nice brownish gray or grayish brown whatever you want to call it and here this this uh, step right here is up to you i'm going to show you two ways that you can do this you can do q-tips to smoke out or to blend these colors or if you want to be a little bit more specific you can also use a stump or tortillion like this. This is, this is much more, has a more refined end tip, you know, and so it's not going to be as smoky. I don't know if you can see the difference. See, like this is more, and I'm going to use it here. This is more specific. Like if you want more defined lines, like, but if you use a Q-tip, you know, expect to get more of a smudge type of thing, a much more softer general, um, type of result instead of something more you know specific in this case i think since these are the hairs that come out of this area they're finer so i'm just going to use this so as you work on your uh, composition whatever it is especially if it's furry you're going to come across all sorts of textures all sorts of directions of how to do things uh, thicknesses so here basically i prepared hola papi bienvenido so here what I did, I prepared the, the, what do you call it? 
the background, the underlying color. Now I'm going to start working on the color on top. And I previously sharpened this pencil, not too much because it's getting to a point that, <laughs> I don't know, it's very, very gentle, the, the tip. So you, you want to be careful with this. I don't want to sharpen it too much and then suddenly I lose the whole thing. But this, you know, it's good enough to work with. Can you, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Now we're doing the fine ends. Now we're doing the color on top. Can we see that? Hola, Marce. Gracias, chicos, por venir a hacerme el aguante, como siempre. <laughs> now, like I said, this is where we're going to be more specific. Why? Because this is the hair. This is what we see first. And our eyes are deceiving because we think we see a dog like this as an example, and we're like, oh, yeah, this is a white dog. Mm, not necessarily. I mean, this dog seriously has all sorts of colors going on, all sorts of textures. But the first thing we see is white. Why is that? Because that's the, that's the color on top. But if we are willing to, what, if what we want to do is to do a composition like this, we need to look with wider eyes, if you will, and realize, okay, so this is just what we see, but it's not necessarily because underneath, you know, if you look in detail, you're going to get to see all these different um, colors happening. And proof of that is what we're doing right now. See how suddenly by doing this, the white, how it beautifully comes out. And, you know, that allows us, because we worked on the underlying color first, that will allow us to create a much more realistic look. That's why I say, I always say it's very important, always, that you start from the background to the foreground. And for all, every case, you know, it's for its own specific reasons, but in this case it's very important if you want a realistic result. Okay, now we're gonna follow beautiful little beard here. And yeah, there's like a lot more going on. So I'm gonna have, probably have to go back and retouch a few of this, but I just wanted to, thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, this is like what I do. <laughs> I've done a few times, you know, and I just teach myself, okay, this works, this doesn't work, let's work a little bit more. And once you're done with this, of course you can go back and fill in little things, little areas that you kind of forgot, perhaps, or maybe just, Press on the white a little bit more where we have most of the highlights. But when it comes to this type of stuff, like something like this that is super light, I gotta tell you guys, less is more. Don't go overboard with highlights. And that applies like pretty much to any, um, any composition. Okay, so here we have little areas where this is gonna be a little bit um, darker. Not sure why, but sometimes, you know, like you would have to actually take the dog and be like, okay, let me look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at your hair. And then you kind of figure out. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, for some reason this is darker. And maybe it's just the way the light is reflecting. Whatever it is, you know, it's nice to always be, you know, pay attention to these um, details. What I'm going to do now, since we already did this, this is just a repetition of everything else that happens everywhere, what I did here as well. Uh, Malari, thank you for joining us today. I think it's the first time I see you here. And if you guys want, yeah, tell me where you're watching from. Uh, what kind of art you do, I would love to hear about that. And like I always say, you know, if you get here a little bit later or if you've been watching the whole video and you're not sure about certain things, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. And yeah, so because, you know, I, I basically just talk, 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 you know. But And then if I cannot answer right now because I'm looking at the drawing, I will make sure to answer later. Now I'm just... I've been working a little bit on the liveliness, you know, because this is the, 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 I mean, the windows of the soul, the eyes, right? So you want to be very careful with how you do the eyes. Like in this case, they're pretty much done. And I love how they came alive. They really, really did. And how do we do this? You have to be very mindful of contrast, okay? By contrast, I mean, now I'm doing like super, super dark here but no more than here and here by the pupil as well as right here. And then these little reflections of the light on the eyes, those are crucial. This, I would say, all the work we're putting on the, on the fur and everything is great, but if the eyes don't look um, lifelike, 
um, you know, you're going to miss out on a lot as far as the drawing. It's going to look 2D versus 3D. But you want, especially in, in a dog, dogs are so wonderful, you know, they, you want them to look um, as realistic as possible. So I'm just applying the last few touches to the eyes. And I'm very, being very precise here because I don't want to, you know, get it wrong. It's just, they're very teeny areas, but they're very important. So make sure you kind of follow that. And to end today's live or lesson, I'm just going to fill in over here the hairs that come out of the eye. As you see, I, I never put my finger on the drawing because you don't want to smudge you know, the, the work you've done with your own, the own you know, oils from your hands and all of that. I want to do a little bit more over here. This part is pretty dark, so we will. Okay. And then we might add a little bit more gray. These are longer strokes of the pencil over here. Very good. All right, everyone. I think we'll, that's, what we're, that's all for today. And I'm very glad that you joined me. And, you know, we're, we're going to have this video recorded for you to watch later if you want to. And also, if you are a portrait artist or you're interested in learning more about portraits, I have a free tutorial from beginning to end that you can download. Uh, if you go to my um, bio, you're going to have a link from my website on how you can download your free copy of the tutorial. And I also have a page on Facebook. There's all the information there as well that you can join. I'm slowly but surely building my artistic community so we can talk about things and discuss different art and you can share your artwork. And as well as my uh, YouTube page where I post all of these as well with descriptions. So thank you very much again for joining me today. And I hope you all have My friends, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you were able to learn something. And if you have any comments, any requests or any questions, please leave them down below and consider subscribing to this channel if you like this video and any tips that you may have are going to help me improve as an artist as well as um, sharing with you whatever it is that you find useful in order for you to become an amazing artist. So thank you very, very much for watching and don't forget to check out my website to grab your free tutorial on how to draw a realistic looking face. So thank you very much for being here and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye bye now.